Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about spoon fishing. I've been wanting to make this video for so long. This is going to be a dedicated, in-depth, how to fish spoons for trout and salmon. Up here in Maine we get landlocked salmon, brook trout, rainbow trout, brown trout, and uh, that's pretty much what these tactics are going to be about. We're going to talk about what you need for gear, we're going to talk about different types of spoons, where to fish them, how to fish them, everything you need to know on how to fish spoons for trout. So the first thing that we're going to go over is the setup. We're going to talk about the rod and the reel here. Um, this is a pretty high-end setup and it's what I prefer. I've used this for years and it's by far the lightest, most sensitive trout rod that I've ever used. This is a 7-foot ultralight JT panhandle. It's made by JT Outdoor Products. If you guys want to check out the description below, right near the top I'm going to put a promo code for you guys to use which will give you a discount on any of the rods or gear at JT Outdoor Products. So check that out if you want to pick up one of these rods or any of their ice rods, anything like that, make sure you check that out. I, I really prefer a longer rod when I'm fishing spoons. So like a seven, eight foot. This seven foot rod is, is pretty versatile. I can fish a bunch of different stuff with it. So I, I stick to a seven foot, but anywhere from a six foot six, maybe an eight foot rod, anywhere between there. But the seven foot is like the sweet spot for me. I also made a video a few years back about a really cheap trout rod setup that you can get for under 50 bucks. That That'll get you started and you know I have a lot of friends that actually use that rod and reel and they love it. You just get any 1000 size reel it's going to do you well. This is a Stratic Shimano Stratic reel 1000. Well, I've been testing out a couple other brands but I've just gone back to the Shimano. I just don't ever have problems with them. I have problems with every other brand that I've used but this uh, these guys are the most reliable and they're super durable and I like the drag system and everything. It's just personal preference, but a 1,000 size spool will get you where you need to be for spoon fishing. The line that I use, I, I really kind of switch back and forth. I really would prefer to use braided line. So a 10 pound braided line, P line is what I usually would use um, if I'm going with braid. And that just gives you the ultimate sensitivity. You feel every tick, every bite, and you even feel the the wobble of that spoon to make sure your spoons uh, get the, the right action. You can you can feel it with this rod anyways, you can feel it in the tip of the rod when that spoon's working back and forth. I just tend to have less issues when I use monofilament, so I kind of just stick to that. It's a little more versatile too because I do some float fishing, some other type of fishing with this rod. So I've just kind of come back this year to mono, but who knows, maybe next year I'll be doing braid. But braid gives you the most sensitivity, and if you can deal with it, you know, sometimes you get a lot of wind knots with, with braid and stuff, but if you can deal with it, not get a bunch of line twists, um, which we'll talk about later, um, definitely try it. But this is what I prefer. It's a P-Line CX Premium, and we'll link that down in the description below for you guys. I get it in like the moss green color, but they make it clear. And this is a six pound line, but you can go anywhere from probably like a four to an eight pound line. I like to use that P-Line CX Premium because it's actually a copolymer line, which means that it's a monofilament that has a fluorocarbon coating over it, which gives it a lot of abrasion resistance and a little bit more strength. That's the setup that we're using. You can see it's a nice, nice long rod. So let's go talk about the different types of spoons. All right, so I've gone ahead and pulled a few spoons out of my tackle box and just so we can kind of get a little bit of a, a different assortment here, but most of these, I, some of these I don't even use anymore, but um, because I make my own lures. Um, you can see a common theme between all these are the single hooks. Now, most of the spoons that you're gonna buy are gonna have treble hooks on them. Uh, Everett Lures, which is my company, um, these spoons here, this one, this one, they come, and this, they come with uh, single hooks already attached, and they also have a barrel swivel on the top, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, it's kind of a different assortment here. It's a super duper, um, nice compact um, little bait here that you can cast quite a long ways. It's got some good action to it. Um, Similar to the Castmaster style spoons, it's like a wedge, you know, it's got a lot of weight to it and the profile is pretty small. So this spoon actually weighs just about as much as this spoon right here does. Uh, this is a little Clio, a very, very classic trout spoon. Um, 
and of course the Phoebe, and I don't even know what this is, like a Red Devil, uh, a Devil style spoon, like this one, Daredevil. Um, these are old. This is an Everett Lures Rainbow Smelt spoon that we sell. Like I said, a lot of things that I do is I switch over the hooks and I'll add a barrel swivel to my spoon. And that just makes it because that spoon's gonna wanna flop in the water like this. And if you don't have a swivel on there and you're using a spinning rod, it's gonna twist that line all up and at some point you're gonna get bird's nest and have your line all tangled. So you need to use a swivel when you use a spoon. So whether you hook it to, you, to your spoon like this or if you run a leader with a swivel up above it, um, either way works. I like just having it right on the spoon. I don't have to use a snap swivel that way. I tie directly onto the swivel. And like I said, if you buy Everett lures like this, they come with a single hook and a barrel swivel already on the spoon. And it just kind of minimizes the overall profile of the bait without having to use you know, a big bulky snap swivel. Wonder Bread style spoon, glow. So it's got some glow properties at low light, works pretty good. Um, you know, the bait, this one I caught a ton of brook trout on this year, just a classic um, front and back silver and gold or copper color uh, hammered front, classic trout spoon. And we also have like a blue fade. We have, we have a whole lineup of spoon. We have a ton. So go check out Everett Lures down in the description below. On Everett Lures, we also sell replacement hook packs. So if you have a spoon that comes with a treble hook and you want to change it out, you can buy a pack from us. It comes with 10 in a pack. And I really like using the size six on these 1 8 ounce spoons. I think they work well with that size split ring there. And on the quarter ounce spoons, I use a little bit bigger. I go up to a size four. There are benefits between using some versus others. You know, maybe when you get down to like these thinner profile baits, you might want to toss this in, in like a, a stream where the bait might be a little bit smaller. Or if the bite's a little tougher, you want to downsize. These are 1 8 ounce spoons here. And I find that the 1 8 ounce spoon really works well and the quarter ounce spoon really works well. If you're going for say lake trout, you know, bigger, bigger um, flowing water, things like that, you might want to bump up to a bigger spoon like this. But I tend to really use a lot of eighth and quarter ounce spoons. So like they always say, you always want to try to match the hatch. So knowing what's in that body of water that you're going to be fishing for forage and bait fish um, is, is really key. So if there's smelt or shiners or you know, dace, any type of bait fish like that, you want to try to find spoons that mimic those colors that are found in those fish. Really, really crystal clear water. I like to go more natural colors and you know a brighter flash. So like that hammered half and half copper and uh, silver spoon works really well in clear water. Darker water, I like a darker color. It stands out more in stained water. So fishing bright colors on bright days and darker colors on dark days goes the same way. When light penetrates the water, um, if it's a dark day and you have a nice bright lure, the light isn't gonna refract off from that lure in, in dark water as much as it would if, it, if the sun was out. So when you're fishing bright colors, you want the sun to really be hitting that and giving off a bunch of flash and shine. Um, so on the darker days, I, I use more dull colors. In the fall for brown trout, I have a lot of confidence in orange. So something that has a little bit of orange in it, I really like. Pinks and whites work really well for me also all year round. But there's a few things you can start off with there when you're uh, looking for spoons. So now let's get into talking about how we fish and where we fish spoons. So I personally don't fish spoons in a lot of pocket water scenarios. I do sometimes, it's kind of fun, but um, it, it's sort of hard because the weight of the spoon, it's so much bigger and more dense than like a, you know, a small spinner or something like that. And it wants to sink you know faster. So if you have small little pockets, you're not gonna be you're not going to get that much action out of that spoon in that small little pocket. So maybe if you want to use a spoon downsizing to something like these smaller uh, cast masters in a little stream, those will work good. If you have a deep hole, you could definitely throw some smaller spoons. Um, you have, if you have enough room to sort of retrieve it back and get that action that you want. But I really like using spoons in uh, bigger flowing waters like the river and still water. So lakes and ponds. When you're on flowing water, you really want to look for those seams. And the seam is where the faster moving water meets the slower moving water. 
So the fish like to hang out right near those seams. A lot of bait and a lot of food comes down and naturally falls right into the seam. And the trout can hang out in that slower moving water and just pop up real quick, grab its meal, and then dip back down. So if you can get your spoon in that strike zone, that is the money spot right there. And a lot of times when you're casting spoons, you cast out into that current and let it swing down. It naturally falls into the seam anyways. And what you wanna do is basically, just like you would if you were fly fishing, you wanna cast perpendicular to the shoreline or even at a 45 degree angle upstream. If you're just starting out with spoons, you wanna just start with a nice steady retrieve and work it back to you nice and slow. Once you get used to uh, how that spoon is acting in the water there, you can toss in some, uh, you know, a couple different techniques. One thing I really love to do, I do it almost all the time, is a twitch twitch pause retrieve. So I cast it out, I let the spoon actually flutter down, um, and it sinks pretty quick with a nice fluttering action, and then just give it a couple twitches, and then reel up that slack, and then twitch, 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 and reel up the slack, twitch, 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 reel up the slack, and that spoon is swinging down the current all on its own. And with these single hooks, you don't get as many snags as you would with a treble hook, and that's one of the main reasons I use these. Um, if you do get snagged, they're fairly easy to get out. You just get sort of a different angle on it and try to pop it out. Eight times out of 10, that fluttering pause action, and as soon as I reel up that slack, that's when the fish hits on that pause. They just, they love that, that fluttering action, that dying bait fish presentation. There we go. Get it on the fall. They like that pause tonight. But really try to find those areas that have some good riffles, some good runs and then just kind of pick it apart and start real close to you, kind of flip it out there, you know, 10, 15 feet, and then twitch it and work it back to you, and then maybe a little bit further, twitch it, work it back a little bit further, and then you can just start covering water after that, because a lot of times there'll be fish sitting right up close to the bank too. So I'm in a small little run right here. You can see there's like a natural little falls area right here. So, you know, some fish are gonna come up in here and hold in this little area here and feed. Um, so what I like to do is, Make short little cast first, just kind of go right here right in front of me, just kind of pop it, see if there's anything real close. And then kind of work our way out further and just kind of dissect this whole, this whole little, uh, little run right here. We're gonna make basically that same cast, but a little bit further down right here. Kind of work that spoon a little bit. Oh, there's one right there. This is a turkey. Yeah. Wow. So another thing I, I sometimes do in, in rivers is I've casted and drifted that spoon all the way down as parallel to the bank. I let that spoon sit there and basically troll all on its own. I let the current work that spoon just as if I was trolling it in a boat and I'm not reeling at all. And I just kind of every now and then I give it a little bit of a twitch, twitch, twitch. And I'm not reeling up any line at all. And you'll get actually a lot of hits like that, just kind of holding that spoon there and letting the, the natural current just give it its action. Fishing above a run is really hard to land the fish, but it's a pretty easy way if you can find it a natural obstruction in the river that creates a nice hole or a run. If you can get above that with a spoon and sort of just troll it right under the surface, that actually gets you a lot of bites. It's just hard to land the fish that way, but if you can get it done, that's one, one way to do it. Places to look for in streams and rivers are natural obstructions like boulders that are sticking out of the water, you know, down trees, bridges, bridge abutments, where that creates seams and creates structure for fish to sit behind in current. And if you can get your spoon placed in there just right, they're gonna whack it if they're hungry. When you're fishing still water with them, start out with, a, with the quarter ounce. I usually start out with a little bit bigger spoon just to see if there's anything out there. Usually the first few casts, if you're, if you're in an area that you know the fish are gonna be in, um, that quarter ounce spoon, if you don't get hits on it the first, you know, five, ten casts, I usually switch over to a smaller one and, and you can pick off a few uh, here and there. But places you want to look for um, in ponds is obviously tributaries, streams, things like that, that dump in or dump out of the lake. A lot of fish will hold there during different times of the year, during spawning seasons. And uh, boat ramps, uh, obviously you want to check your stocking reports because fall, when they do a lot of the fall stocking, that's a great time to get out there and just get some confidence in fishing these baits because there's a lot of fish concentrated in, in, in one area 
and you can really see what works and what doesn't and what gets the bites. All right guys, so there's a few tips and tricks to hopefully get you guys started in spoon fishing. I could go on and on in detail about, you know, a bunch of different things, but this video is already getting a little lengthy, so there's a few tips and tricks for you guys. Hope that helps. If you have any questions, leave them below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.